Today's Gospel reading is a continuation of Jesus' farewell discourses from John's Gospel. And so this takes place before the events of Easter, and Jesus is explaining to his disciples what's about to happen. And the disciples don't quite yet grasp his words, and the truth of them only really sink in after they've come to pass. Now today's reading anticipates Ascension. Um, Ascension the church will mark on Thursday and at Ascension the church marks Jesus' ascent into heaven, his returning to the Father after having appeared to the disciples after his resurrection. And today's reading also anticipates Pentecost and Pentecost the church will mark in a couple of Sundays time and Pente at Pentecost the church marks the coming of the Holy Spirit and this is what Jesus is promising in today's gospel the coming of the Holy Spirit and he says if you love me you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever this is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. And Jesus is also anticipating what the disciples might feel after the ascension, after his ascension. They might be feeling abandoned. And so the Holy Spirit comes to as a comforter or as uh, an advocate um, and there are different uh, translations of, of the word paraclete which John uses in, in his gospel. Now the phrase I want to focus on is spirit of truth and in John's gospel truth crops up a lot. In last week's gospel reading Jesus describes himself as the way, the truth, and the life. And now he's saying that at his behest, the Father is going to send the Spirit of truth. At the start of John's Gospel, in the prologue, truth comes up. When Jesus is being described, you know, the Creator come into creation, um, the Word made flesh, and full of grace and truth. And truth crops up in other interesting places in John's Gospel as well, including in Jesus's trial. And Pontius Pilate asks Jesus, what is truth? And the irony here is that the truth, Jesus, is staring Pontius Pilate in the face, but he can't see it. Now, what is truth, or what is the truth that Jesus is talking about, and what is the truth that the spirit of truth is all about? And I would say that the truth here is of um, a different nature uh, than perhaps what we might think of sort of everyday truths. And I will use an illustration to it to try and explain what I, I, I mean. For the last 10 years, I have been a subscriber of The Economist, and each week over those last 10 years, my favourite article has tended to, in each edition, has tended to be the obituary. And I know that might sound rather morbid, but quite often they are fascinating, quite often they are very beautifully and poetically written, and quite often they are about people who I would otherwise have not known anything about. And I, I found great inspiration from a recent obituary of, um, which was actually entitled A Midwestern Parable, and it's about Willie Levi, and there's no reason why you should have heard of him. But he died of COVID-19. Uh, 
Now, for um, 35 years of his life, uh, Willie worked for uh, an employer who um, treated him appallingly and treated others alongside him appallingly as well. He had a um, what's described as a mental disability and under United States law um, employers can pay those with mental disabilities a lower wage than others and that wage that he did get, a large slice of that wage was taken by his employer to provide him with accommodation, which over those 35 years grew increasingly dilapidated to the point where, you know, he was really living in, uh, along with others, in unsanitary conditions. And it took 35 years um, before he, that the truth of that situation became widely known and as a successful legal case and the truth came to light. Now, Willie was someone of faith and his faith uh, was something that was nurtured in him when he was young. And uh, he was into singing. It says... Uh, he belonged to a choir called the Sunshine Singers. They were tall round with a repertoire of hymns. The old rugged cross. What a friend we have in Jesus. He sang more in church on Sundays. Surely goodness. Amazing grace. Along with the hymns, he liked to shake his tambourine to keep the beat. And it goes on to say that if you saw in, in his adult life, Willie in the street you would have no idea about the sort of working conditions that he had or the kind of living conditions that he had. And I think that's perhaps because he had his mind fixed on that higher truth that Jesus is talking about and which the, high, that which the Holy Spirit is drawing us towards. Because for people like Willie, they lived in horrendous conditions, and you could say that a large portion of their lives were taken from them. And that it wasn't much consolation at the end. Um, although they were liberated, they still had many, many years behind them of being mistreated. And yeah, that's a difficult thing to, to get your head around. I guess the point that I'm ultimately making is that just as Jesus thought that the disciples might feel abandoned after he goes away, after he ascends to heaven, and so the Holy Spirit comes so that they know that they haven't been abandoned. Just in this case, while people might be abandoned by society, no one is ever abandoned by God. And that's the higher truth. Amen.